grab your notepad, get yourself comfortable, and get ready because I'm going to start teaching you about MS right now. Today, I want to spend a few minutes and talk to you about my friend Stephen Krieger's topographical model of MS, or as I like to refer to it, the leaking pool model of MS. It is a really, really helpful way to understand MS, and I use it in clinic with patients and families all the time. So let me show you the model. Here we have a cartoon of the cross-section of a swimming pool. So this is the water level of the pool. This is the shallow end of the pool and the deep end, and that's the floor of the swimming pool. Now, this is labeled as the clinical threshold, right here where the water is. Everything above the clinical threshold over here, the human being is aware of. So the person with MS experiences a symptom, like they can't see out of their left eye or their right foot is numb. Things that happen underneath the water level here, the human being is not aware of. They don't experience a symptom. You can see a spot on the MRI, but it's asymptomatic to the person. And this is the clinical threshold. Now, the amount of water in the swimming pool we refer to as the functional reserve. And the functional reserve is your nervous system's ability to withstand an insult. Not you're ugly, but an insult like you have a fever or an infection or you haven't slept in two days. And you see that there's a larger body of water, volume of water or functional reserve at the deep end as compared at the shallow end where there's a much smaller functional reserve. Now, the floor of the swimming pool represents your nervous system. And so this section right here, right, the shallowest area where there's the smallest functional reserve, this is the part of the nervous system that has the least flexibility. It's going to take the biggest hit. This is your optic nerves and your spinal cord. So your spinal cord's about as thick as my two fingers here. And if it's damaged, there's no secondary spinal cord like alternate route. And so damage here typically doesn't go unnoticed. And that's reflected in the model because there's a very small functional reserve. Now, if you think about sort of this middle area, which has more functional reserve than the optic nerve and spinal cord, but still not a lot, this is the brain stone. So you think about the medulla, the pons, the midbrain, the cerebellum, the structures at the base of the brain have little flexibility and damage doesn't typically go unnoticed, but it's better than what you see here. Now the area with the largest functional reserve is the top of the brain, the lobes or the supertentorium, and they have the highest functional reserve. Now in the setting of MS, we talk about having an attack. And the way that we draw that in the model is that we draw a stalagmite that pushes up from the surface of the swimming pool and it crests the surface of the water. So here, this occurred, let's say that this is an optic neuritis and you see that there's a stalagmite that pushes above the clinical threshold so the human being is aware of it. And this would represent an optic neuritis. Now let's say that the person receives steroids and with time, their vision returns. Maybe not 100%, but it's much you know, better than it was. You would redraw this in the model and you would redraw it so that now the top of that stalagmite was underneath the surface of the water. And then let's say that over the years, you know, the, the, God forbid they had another MS attack and then they had some other MRI findings, just to fill this in a little bit. Now, I shared with you earlier that this model is called the leaking pool model of MS. And so I'm going to draw in these water droplets as the water level drops. And over the years, the water level is going to go from here where it started, it's going to drop. Now, if you think of my pen as the water level, what you see is that the water level has uncovered this area of old structural damage. So the water was up here, and over the years, that area of optic neuritis that got better, well, the, the optic nerve is still damaged. And as the water level drops, it uncovers that area of damage, and the person, again, develops difficulties. That is the underpinnings of progression. And I think that that's a very important concept. 
please share with me in the comment section below if you have any questions about this or if you'd like to hear more about the leaking pool model of MS. I would like to talk about the concept of PIRA, or progression independent from relapse activity. I'm going to explain the concept using this simple graph. As you go from left to right, you get older. As you climb up on the graph, you become more disabled. So going up is bad. And so we're going to represent one human being's experience with multiple sclerosis. And we'll draw it as such. Here, they've accrued no disability. They're moving forward in time, but they're not going up. And then they have an MS attack where they lose vision in their one eye and they remain unable to see for some period of time, but fortunately then they make a recovery. And they recover to a certain point and then they move forward in time again. And then over serial evaluations, they're noticed to have a slow accumulation of disability, but they haven't had an attack. So let's take a look at this and try to break it apart a bit. And I'm going to introduce to you two concepts. The first one is relapse associated worsening. So if you look here at the graph, this was the person's baseline. Before we started moving forward in time, this is where their level of disability was. And when they had an attack, they didn't fully recover. So this distance from here to here is incomplete recovery from an attack. They had an attack and didn't get all the way better. If you think about it, this entire section is relapse associated worsening. This is the accumulation of disability that they acquired because they didn't get better from their attack. But what about this? Here we see that they got worse and there was no attack. The space under here, this is progression independent from relapse activity. And in the real world, with real people with MS, we see both. It's also important to keep in mind that disease-modifying therapies, they treat both of these things. And so it's not as if we're only able to do one and not the other. This was a quick discussion on progression independent from relapse activity. Please leave your comments or your questions about the concept in the comment section below, I look forward to reading them. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for folks with MS from around the globe, seeing patients in office and via telemedicine. We accept every major insurance carrier and are currently actively enrolling for clinical trials. 